Welcome to a lesson on integrals as solutions to differential equations. A first order ordinary differential equation is an equation of the form dy dx equals f of x comma y or just y prime equals f of x comma y. In general, there is no simple formula or procedure one can follow to find solutions. In the next few lectures, we will look at some special cases where solutions are not difficult to obtain. In this section, let us assume that f is a function of x alone. That is, the equation is y prime equals f of x. We could just integrate or anti-differentiate both sides with respect to x. On the left, the integral undoes a derivative, giving us y of x plus some constant, which we can move to the other side and write y of x equals the indefinite integral of f of x dx plus c. This y of x is actually the general solution to the differential equation y prime equals f of x. We find some antiderivative of f of x and then we add an arbitrary constant to get the general solution. Now is a good time to discuss a point about calculus notation and terminology. Calculus textbooks muddy the waters by talking about the integral as primarily the so-called indefinite integral. The indefinite integral is really the antiderivative in fact, the whole one parameter family of antiderivatives. There really exists only one integral, and that is the definite integral. The only reason for the indefinite integral notation is that we can always write an antiderivative as a definite integral. That is, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can always write the indefinite integral of f of x dx plus c as the definite integral from x sub zero to x of f of t dt plus c. Let's take a closer look at this. Again, starting with y prime of x equals f of x, we can integrate both sides of the equation, which gives us y of x equals the indefinite integral of f of x dx plus c, and we claim we can write this as the definite integral from x sub zero to x of f of t dt plus c. To check to make sure this is a solution, let's differentiate both sides of the equation to see if y prime of x equals f of x. So here we differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. We know on the left, the derivative of y of x with respect to x is y prime of x. On the right, let's first evaluate the definite integral. The antiderivative of little f of t is big F of t, which we then evaluate at x and x sub zero, and then determine the difference, which I've shown below. So now we have the derivative of big F of x minus big F of x sub zero plus c. Differentiating on the right, the derivative of big F of x is little f of x, and since big F of x sub zero and c are constants, the derivatives are zero, giving us y prime of x equals f of x, verifying we can write the solution as the def integral shown here. For sake of consistency, we will keep using the indefinite integration notation when we want an antiderivative, and you can now think of the def integral as a way to write it. Normally, we also have an initial condition, such as y of x sub zero equals y of zero, for some two numbers, x sub zero and y sub zero. x sub zero is usually zero, but not always. We can then write the solution as a definite integral in a nice way. Suppose our problem is y prime equals f of x with the initial condition y of x sub zero equals y of zero. Then the solution can be written as y of x equals the definite integral from x sub zero to x of f of s ds plus y sub zero. Notice x sub zero is the lower limit of integration and y sub zero is the constant c. Let's check this solution by determining y prime of x and y of x sub zero. To find y prime of x, we differentiate both sides of the equation 1.2. The derivative of y of x is equal to y prime of x. Differentiating on the right side of the equation, the first step is to evaluate the def integral the antiderivative of little f of s is big F of s, which we evaluate at x and x sub zero and determine the difference, which is shown here on the right. Differentiating, the derivative of big F of x is equal to little f of x. Big F of x sub zero and y sub zero are both constants, giving a derivative of zero. So this verifies y prime of x equals f of x, and now we also have to verify the initial condition by determining y of x sub zero. To determine y of x sub zero, we replace the upper limit of integration of x with x sub zero. And recall, if the upper and lower limits of integration are the same, the value of the def integral is equal to zero, 
giving us y of x sub zero is equal to y sub zero, verifying our initial condition. So this does verify y of x is the solution to the differential equation with the initial condition. Do note that the def integral and indef integral or anti-differentiation are completely different beasts. The def integral always evaluates to a number, therefore 1.2 is a formula we can plug into the calculator or a computer and it will be happy to calculate specific values for us. We will easily be able to plot the solution and work with it just like with any other function. It is not so crucial to always find a closed formula for the antiderivative. Let's look at one more example. Let's solve the differential equation y prime equals e to the power of negative x squared with the initial condition y of zero equals one. By the preceding discussion, the solution must be y of x equals the def integral from zero to x of e to the power of negative s squared ds plus one. Where notice how the lower limit of integration is a zero and the constant c is equal to one because of the initial condition y of zero equals one. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with writing the solution as a definite integral. This particular integral is in fact very important in statistics. I hope you found this helpful.